So uh, a lot of people are asking me after all these years of painting the figure, why do I still paint the figure? Haven't I exhausted all the possibilities with that? And uh, I just tell them, well, I have a lot of other interests ongoing concurrently with doing the figure, but the figure for me is sort of my link to art history and how I address what's gone before and how I challenge myself to try to take that into another vocabulary without losing touch with the initial symbolism is my challenge at this point. Um, all my paintings usually start from drawings. I think that drawing is kind of the, the backbone of, of image making. And uh, if you find your rhythm of form within the drawing, then you can translate that into paint more easily. So I usually take drawings from the model and remove them a few steps from the direct observation of the model to try to find its own language and its own truth. Not a slave to what was observed, but more within the realm of its own art factor. So uh, I'm a big fan of cartooning and Picasso and people that make a, a committed line to define a shape rather than a series of small lines to, to create a shape. Uh, there's a you know, Zen practice of brush painting where you try to get the most information out of a single brush stroke. So that's always kind of in the back of my mind as I'm doing painting. And I like to drum and music is kind of one of those performance arts where each rhythm takes you to the next rhythm and you can't just sort of stop. You have to keep the progression of rhythms going and a painting can achieve the same kind of performance uh, quality to it if you bring that attention to that aspect of it. So one of my favorite things, uh, I paint in acrylic because it dries fast and one of my favorite processes in painting is to layer quickly over other older layers and you can reduce the image back to its earlier essential components and then bring it back. Or you can drop color back or you can just unify the overall sense of the painting and uh, not get too hung up on the preciousness of it because painting is really infinitely generous in the amount of gifts that it will yield up. So I never get too attached to any particular finished painting. And uh, one of my favorite quotes of Picasso was, if a painting is finished, that means it's dead. So I like, if I can find an interesting place of non-completion, and that's when I think the painting is finished, because there's more interest in the process of the painting than all the answers being fully determined by the artist. So one fun thing is to use opposite colors over layers. If you have a cool layer underneath, you can drop a hot layer over it and some of what's underneath will show through and it adds to the vibration of the color. And you can start maybe losing your attachment to the, the subject matter and get more involved in just the painting itself until you can find that all the elements of the painting are starting to sit in a balanced way on the page. Try to find the interlocking components of the form that create a rhythm across the rectangle. The favorite artist of mine growing up was Nathan Oliveira, who actually came to Santa Fe, and I had the great fortune of taking a two-week course from him. And uh, he helped me to push the boundaries of figurative painting into a whole new level of understanding of the process of painting. It wasn't so much about the figure, but it was about the paint itself and how to use the plastic material to express something beyond whatever the subject matter happens to be. So I guess in terms of influences, I probably would say that I'm influenced by just about everything from a broad spectrum of sources. Popular culture, low art, high art, comic books, Picasso, it's all fair game in some ways because there's creative process there, there's a language there, and uh, there's a human expression there.